Yo, what's going on, 60 Cylinder Squad? I want to record. I feel like recording, but it's patch day. And on patch day, you cannot record the game because, well, the game is always down like it is right now. So I figured, you know what? I'll go over the patch notes. Why not? We got all these skins. I'll, I'll, I'll scroll through slowly for you guys to see. Because I don't really care about the skins, to be honest. Except this looks kind of lit. Unholy doodle raw. That's funny. Chibi Thanatos. I mean. Oh, they updated Sobek. That's cool. Uh, and then, okay, so we got some things. More updates coming soon. The battle pass. Track items I don't care. Quality of life. An NA West server. Not bad. This unholy name is being changed to Eset or Eset. Which is good because monetization status. Uh, uses of the word Mayan are being fixed to Maya, which is a proper term. Updated Q images to use art for the current maps. Nice. Bug fixes. I really don't care about this, honestly. Like, rank for rewards, you're not actual rank showing up. I, it doesn't really bother me, but I mean, you know. There you go, I guess. In dual lane, where the first brute minion was spawning one wave too early, fixed an issue where some abilities could damage the HP of downed lane scorpions, fixed an issue where god health bars would sometimes disappear as gods entered or exited lanes, fixed an issue. Okay. Jeez Louise. It's a lot of changes in this, huh? Thoth. Oh, these are just issues with gods. I don't care about the issues with gods. They're never fixed anyway, so. Items. Seer the jungle. Fixed an issue where this buff could be gained permanently. That seems pretty game-breaking. Not show stats on console item builder. That could be annoying. All right. Now for the actual update, the real things. So Stone of Foul and Mail of Renewal rework. We saw the Stone of Foul and Mail of Renewal were often overlooked in builds. We wanted these items to carve a stronger identity and feel like solid options specifically for support players. Good to know. Rework, tier two, 1400 gold. A Little bit of each protection, a little bit of health, a little bit of power. Pretty standard, honestly. Let's see what the Stone of Foul rework is. 2,500 gold, a lot of gold. Um, 35 power, 30 of each protection. So an overall, like, 150 health, decent statted item. The passive, when you hit an enemy guy with a basic tag, you gain a stack of Foul's Blessing, give you 2% damage mitigation. At three stacks, you gain double the damage mitigation, 20% CR. Wow. 12% damage mitigation? Because you gain two, Four, six, and at six it doubles to twelve and twenty percent CCR. You gain twelve percent mitigation, twenty percent CCR, thirty of each protection, one hundred fifty health. That's a good item. That's a good item. Every single, it's twenty five hundred gold. It's expensive. It's an expensive item, especially for support players. Most support items are like twenty one to twenty three hundred gold. Twenty five hundred is a is a big ask for a support item. But like I could see this being key on many supports. Twelve percent damage mitigation and twenty percent CCR. That's big. Anyways, let's keep going. Mail of renewal rework. Uh twenty four hundred gold, three hundred HP, that's big. Fifteen HP five, twenty of each protection. This is just kind of like an HP item. You're hit by an enemy god, you gain a stack up to once a second, increasing your protections by four, max of five stacks, so 20 protections. At max stacks upon being hit, you are immediately healed for 15% of your max health. Holy shit. What, is there a cooldown? Yeah, once every minute. Okay, the cooldown is a minute. Ooh, and allies are also healed for 15% of their max health over 20 seconds. That, I mean, hey, that's not bad. Uh, I mean, 
15% of your health doesn't seem like a whole lot, though, to be completely honest. I don't know. I don't know how this item is going to do. I think Stone of Foul is going to be really good. I don't know about Mail of Renewal. Attack speed item changes. Blessed. Blessed be thy name. Attack speed slow should not stack with other attack speed slow effects. Oh my god. Oh, many of the new items, such as Mannequin, Scepter, and Mace, ignored this. The stacking nature of these effects is especially tricky in how these stack with others and which should win. In 8.3, effects will no longer stack instead of choosing. Instead, choosing the strongest attack speed slow to apply in the case where you are affected by Witchblade and a single stack of Itchval, you will only be slowed by the Witchblade if Itchval gets to three stacks. However, it will take over as the slow being applied by and Witchblade will be ignored until Itchval falls off. This will prevent players from stacking these effects to fully shut down basic attack reliant. God's thank Jesus. Thank you. Thank you so much. Players may only have one attack speed slow from items applied to them at a time. The debuff icons can stack on a player for tracking purposes but only the current strongest debuff will be active at one time this affects itch of all mannequins mid guardian witch blade frostbound you name it it affects it thank god the highest attack speed slow in the game now is mannequin scepter at 40 percent when it's fully upgraded so you know i oh i do i just i can't i can't be more thankful I'm just, I'm so happy this changed. This made Duel, as anybody, super unfun. Because everyone would just go death, death toll and attack speed slows. And that's the meta. And now that attack speed slows can't stack, that's so much better, man. So much better. Okay, benevolence. Encourage our players to be more benevolent. Never going to happen. We're playing smite. Increase health. Increase gold per five seconds. And increase the max of, oh, it has a minimum bonus gold and bonus XP value of one. Okay. Pretty good, actually. Let's see. Mannequin Scepter. Mannequin Scepter and I of the Jungle provide a choice. Trade-off sustained for different tools as a jungler. While sound in principle and often made gods going this item have to be quite passive early on as I didn't have enough health to play with to utilize these trade-offs. Even though they were all well statted, including seeing us uh, or seeing use outside of the jungle, the trade off was way too severe. Boomba's dagger will still triumph as the safe jungle start out, but a mannequin and I of the jungle are getting some sustain to help them compete. Mannequin Scepter specifically is losing its flat damage reduction in favor of sustain from defeating jungle monsters. This further addresses Mannequin Scepter controlling many solo lane matchups while keeping it as a strong jungle choice. This is huge. This is huge. Why is this huge? One, the flat damage reduction in duel meant that it was bought as a tank item. It was bought, it, Mannequin Scepter was not bought, oh, I want the burn. Oh, I want the attack speed reduction. It, you buy it because it was tanky. It had defense and it had flat damage reduction. You were a tank when you bought it. Whether you liked it or not, that's just what you were. With no tankiness, now it heals, obviously there's three minions in each minion camp so it heals for 45 hp and 45 mana when you beat a camp that's so much better because with mannequin scepter you burn the camps quick so you don't lose that much health and you regain 45 also so it's good it's good it's good it's good i love this change to mannequin scepter especially for duel i think for duel this is a big change I the jungle is seeing a slew of changes. First, the magical power provided didn't bring enough for our mage junglers to really feel it. The base HP 5 and attack speed pushed this item well outside of the jungle role as we have seen it rise in many roles, including some mid picks to prioritize that these tweaks better focus its identity as a jungle start. While the new sustain while the new sustain wall in the jungle solidifies that focus. Increase the magic power by 5. Eh. When in the jungle, you gain 15 HP 5 and 10 MP5. That's big. But then they decrease the HP 5 to 50, or to 10 overall. Does that mean you get 25 HP 5 when you're in the jungle? And 10 when you're outside of the jungle? I think that's what it means. And they lower the attack speed down by 5%. This, I mean, this is better, right? Like, Ao Kuang is going to slam this item. I think most junglers like this item in general. I don't think it's a nerf. 
I don't think it's a nerf. Uh, well, I mean, the attack speed sucks, but like, if this is how I'm reading it, this little part, I think it's okay. Protector of the jungle. As a whole, was too efficient. The raw power attacks for protection forever were often solid even before considering the boost wall in the jungle. So they nerfed everything. That's a big nerf. That's a big nerf. Okay, um... Sands of Time buffed twice as much MP5 and 50 less gold. That's good. What's actually really good, MP5 is the main stat you want to focus on, which is why Conduit is bought way more than Sands of Time. I like this. I actually do like this. Centennial's Gift is now more expensive, which means supports cannot start with HP Chalice, Hand of the God, Sentinel's Gift, and Tier 1 Boots. And that was the meta start. Um, now you can't get Hand of the Gods or... Instead of getting an HP Chalice for 300 gold, you get four pots for 200 gold and a hog. Which I think is more than likely what we're going to see because Centennial's Gift is too good. Uh, Tainted Steel was buffed. More power by five and 50 gold cheaper. Still a bad item. And Tainted Steel is only good when it's upgraded. So, like, buffing the level one by this much really doesn't matter, in my opinion. I think in order for an anti-heal item to be good anti-heal in the beginning, it has to be more than 20% anti-heal. Because when you think about it, when you're not brawling, when you're not fighting, you have a 30% anti-heal debuff. And then when you are fighting, Tainted Steel is a 20% debuff. What the fuck? I gave him 10% healing by buying Tainted Steel. At least make it even. You know, at least make it even. That, but I mean, hey, what do I know, right? That's tall. Now, everyone in the dual community, this is what we're looking at. This is what we're looking at. The, the price got buffed by 100 gold. That sucks. But less healing per hit, less mana per hit, but more damage overall. So you're doing more damage, but you're healing less. I'm okay with that. And the biggest part, no longer heals off the Towers and Phoenixes. No longer heals off Towers and Phoenixes. So Death's Embrace is still as strong. <coughs> But um, you can no longer just walk up to a tower and hit it and, and live. At least now, you need to be hitting something to get the heal. So, much better, much put it. Especially, like, even in Conquest. Like, Death's Embrace became a problem in Conquest where a lot of hunters would... Uh, well, I mean, Death's Toll was, like, OP for hunters. And still kind of is really strong. But um, they would just go Death's Embrace... And backdoor Phoenix, because they can. Because, like, what's going to stop them? They have max attack speed and death embrace. Nothing's going to stop them. But, you know, now that it doesn't work off Towers and Phoenixes, let's go. It does work on Titans, though, by the way. Which eh, is fucking stupid, but whatever. Vampire Shroud. Less HP per ability hit on the wave. Less protection, but more power. So less sustain, but more damage and cheaper. Um, I actually, I actually don't like that. I think with your starter items, the, what you want in your starter items is sustainability. You want to be able to sit there in lane long enough to get your item finished before you have to back. Less HP per ability hitting the wave is not the way to do it. Because even though you're doing more damage, that just incentivizes you to fight. And if you're if you're less tanky and healing less while you're fighting, sure you might get a kill or two, but you're also gonna die. I don't know. In duel, I in duel this is bad. In duel this is bad for sure. In conquest, I don't know. War flag buffs, I just think they're I, I mean I think war flag is already underused, so I think this is good. Uh Cupid's buff. It is and I, I do, by the way, this is a quality of life change. I think this is a buff. Because now you can actually see when your Cupid is stunning the enemy. As a support player sometimes, well, and I have a Cupid on the team. If I'm Kuzumbo and my boy is like, attack, 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 as Cupid, as hunters normally do. They spam VGS a lot for some reason. I don't know why. Um, 
and there's a heart bomb on the enemy, I immediately assume if he's spamming attack, it's going to stun. When that motherfucker doesn't stun, and I'm out of position because I, would, I was going to pull him in, all of a sudden I die and it's my fault, even though he's spamming attack, you know? At least now I can see if it's going to stun or not. And by the way, the way you see it is because if it's a stun, the whole circle blinks. Normally, just the heart on top of the player blinks. But um, the whole circle blinks if it's a stun. So it's good. It's a buff, in my opinion. Uh, a big one, by the way. Um, This is big. This is big because he can react a lot faster after dismounting from his ult. So you can... Normally, there... So basically, the, the dismount of Hachiman's ult, he's considered knocked up. He's considered in the air. So you can't beads or anything like that, but you can still be hit. So like, you could ult a Hachiman when he's getting off his horse as Ao Kuang and execute him. Now, he should be able to beads in time with almost half of the time taken away, you know? Um, set, what is this? The ability will no longer trigger item effects that activate after using an ability. Hydrosometra Pupa's Hamper, that's good because it was super broken. Mulan got mega buffed. You can cancel her alt. Her cooldowns and everything else got reduced. Or her cooldown on her three got reduced. You can cancel her alt if you're out of position and your two has a longer slow. So chasing is better. This is the big one. I mean, this is the, the this is the almighty holy grail. Athena's taunt does damage. Why? Pfft, fuck if I know. It seems ridiculous. But it does damage. You know, 30% power scaling. And I mean, and it's a longer taunt. It's a longer taunt by default. Basically, rank 2 taunt is now default level taunt. Rank three taunt is rank two taunt almost. You know, it's 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 pretty crazy. It caps out at two seconds. The same. I I mean I think Athena just I think Athena just shot up the like S tier in conquest. I think she's nuts now. And she's she shot up in duel too, by the way, with this. Um Horus shorter cooldowns by one second. Eh. I, I don't think it matters. I think Horus is okay. Ooh, max hive increase. That's good. And increase the slow to 30% at max rank instead of 20. I don't think the slow was really an issue. Oh, but it, but it is good. I mean, but with your hives, you're already catching them. If you hit your three, you're catching them regardless. Whether the slow is 20% or 30% doesn't matter. So I don't, I don't really think the slow change matters, but the max hive matters for dual at least. Uh, Expel... Increased max darts enemies can be hit by from three to five. Poison does not stack. Okay, this is I was like, oh my god, if poison stacks, that's nuts. Shoots out more darts, 10 to 15. Shoots out 50% more darts and more can hit. So X Files 2 is actually gonna hit a lot harder. Like a lot harder. That's not that's a crazy one. Expel is kind of not bad. I might queue up some Conquest today and just play some Expel. Um, Thor remains a solid choice, but can fall out of the sky when it comes to late game. <laughs> I see what you did there. Stronger on the three. 10% more damage on the three. A good buff, in my opinion. This is a great buff, by the way. Um, her passive now takes six seconds to start going down rather than four, because a lot of times as soul, you would need to just spam your abilities uh, just to keep your passive up while you're in the middle of a fight, even if you don't need your abilities up and you want to hold on to them longer. But now it's it's six seconds, which is a lot better. Another 50% increase. Increase max healing by 2% per corpse. That's fucking ridiculous. And um, increase 10% damage on cor corpse explosion. Both absolutely nuts buffs, in my opinion. Man, a lot of things are really looking good. Loki got nerfed. Oh, he got buffed. Increased scaling from 160 to 195. He got a 35% scaling boost. 
Oh, fuck. Loki has already picked a lot. Okay, I, so, I mean, I think the key things to reach out of this, x is a lot better, Loki's a lot better, Outwash is a lot better. Um, Athena is now S tier, Every God should, or everybody should pick her. And, um... What's that other item? And I think Stone of Fowl is going to be really good. That's the main things. That's a little run over. I'm not sure if I'm even going to upload this video, but we'll see. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, guys, peace.